So one of the things I've talked a lot about on the college football show that I do for the radio station I work for on Saturday mornings is the evolution of the Georgia offense. And it's been fascinating. I'm I'm fascinated by this. I'm I'm this is a me personal kind of topic because I'm fascinated watching this. Do you realize that Georgia's on pace to have a season where they attempt more passes than they have rushing attempts? That the pass attempts per game outdoes the rushing attempts per game. Now, has that ever happened in Georgia history? Yes, it has. It's happened twice in Georgia history. Look at me, twice in Georgia history, 93 and 94. Now, is that really a big surprise? Well, wait a second, didn't they have Garrison Hurst? Yep, but let me tell you what they also had. They also had Andre Hastings and a kid by the name of Eric Zire who could huck it all around, who was a throw it all over the field quarterback, right? I think when he left the SEC, I think he was the all-time passing yardage leader. And you look at still a lot of the records as far as Georgia quarterbacks go, Zaire is still way up there. He had back-to-back -back seasons of 425 pass attempts and 433 pass attempts. Look at where Stetson Bennett is right now. 293 pass attempts already with a few games left. Now, let me, let me preface. I understand that it's a different world in college football statistically because postseason stats count now in your totals, right? So it used to be in the old days, bowl games and things like that. And remember, for a lot of guys, there was no such thing as a conference championship game. And then we also had an 11-game schedule. So when you look at Zaire's numbers, he was putting up 425 and 433 attempts in an 11-game season. So he doesn't get bowl games counted. There was no conference championship, right? And there wasn't a 12th game that they were playing. So I understand it's a little bit skewed now. But if you extrapolate out to where Stetson Bennett is, let's say Georgia plays 14 games, 12 regular season, an SEC title game, and let's say a bowl game. Forget if they get two games in the playoff, whatever like that. Just even in a 14-game schedule, he's on pace to throw it 456 times. And if they get into the national championship game, he's on a pace where he's headed toward 500 attempts. It's crazy to think about. Let me give you some perspective about some of the other quarterbacks that we're familiar with in Georgia football history. I'm going to give you the highest single season pass attempt mark that these quarterbacks have had. Matt Stafford, number one overall pick, right? 235 pass attempts was his most. Aaron Murray. Huck it all over the field, right? 249 pass attempts. Quincy Carter, another first-round draft pick, right, in the NFL. 216 pass attempts. David Green, what he he left George as the winningest quarterback in college football history, 264 pass attempts. DJ Shockley, who had the SEC championship, started his final year, 310 pass attempts. And even Jake Fromm, right, who some people think is a game manager in this than the other, but his highest total was 385 pass attempts. So, look, this is a combination of, you know, we've been waiting for Georgia to get monitored. You know, the last two years, Alabama has averaged more passing attempts than rushing attempts, right? They've gone through this evolution. And we've been waiting and waiting and waiting. We've kind of joked, you know, over the years about Georgia and their, you know, modernizing their offense and getting with the 21st century, right? Where it's a throwing game. Quarterbacks run up big numbers in the NFL and college and everything else. And we've been waiting for this evolution. I think when you look at Todd Munkin and Kirby Smart and the trust that they have in a guy who's a sixth-year quarterback with them, right? You're talking about a guy who's in his sixth year with the program. He's a national championship quarterback. And we talked yesterday. I believe Georgia's going to repeat as a national champions. And, and Stetson Bennett proved last year to many of us that kind of questioned about whether or not he could get it done. He got it done last year. And when he had to make big throws, he was able to make big throws and big plays. And what's even crazier to think about this year with Georgia's offense, there's no George Pickens out there. And if you look, 
Brock Bowers' number of catches per game is the same this year as it was last year. If anything, his numbers will probably be less, certainly from a touchdown perspective, his numbers will probably be less year over year. So it's not like Georgia has, you know, it's not like Georgia has Judy and Ruggs and Waddle and, you know, Devontae Smith and all of those guys running around. It's not like that they have all these huge playmakers on the outside. It's not like that they have first round NFL wide receivers running around everywhere. And it's not like Brock Bowers is on pace for 80 catches and 1,200 yards. His numbers may look less this year. We certainly know from a touchdown perspective, less this year than they will last year. But there is a lot more trust and faith, and there is a bigger evolution in Georgia's offense. And it's not like they're not talented at running back, right? They have a whole slew of guys that they like back there, right? You know, I mean, if you think about the, the depth of the running back position for Georgia, whether it's Edwards or McIntosh or Milken or Branson Robinson, you know, they've gotten contributions from all of those guys. No one particular guy has stood out in the running game. And they're still dedicated to running the football. We saw that against Tennessee. We've seen that at other points that there still is a dedication to running the football. It's not like that they've gone completely lopsided. But it is interesting to think about the evolution of their offense. Another example, this is going to be probably the first year that Georgia averages 300 passing yards a game and 200 rushing yards a game. That's never happened. The only other times that they've averaged over 300 yards passing in a season was Murray's year in 2013, and then again, the back-to-back -back years of Eric Zier, 93 and 94. That's the only three times in program history that they've averaged even 300 passing yards in a season. Well, they're blowing past that big time this year. In fact, I want to say that they are somewhere in the, uh, they're 320 passing yards per game on the season. So look, Nick Saban, right? The, the, the example that everybody uses is Nick Saban, when they brought Lane Kiffin on, that was the switch that flipped, right? And all of a sudden it became a, we can go downfield, push the ball downfield, right? When they had Calvin Ridley and those guys, we could push it downfield. We can get a more modern passing game going. We don't have to just be line up, hand it off to our guys and run the football a bunch. That won them a whole bunch of games. But if you want to turn the volume up and, and you want to be modernized, they did it on defense first and then they did it on offense. Kirby and Munkin are starting to show that this is where we're at in the evolution of Georgia's offense. It's crazy to think about how much that this has changed around for Georgia, that they actually may average more pass attempts than rushing attempts on the season. All right, well, thank you so much for making Hitting Hard with John Trucker your first listen. Don't forget, make Locked On Sports today your second listen. The biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Locked On Sports today is available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast from. And want to mention my friends over at Built Bar. Listen, Built.com is the place to go, right? Everybody's looking for low sugar, low carb, low calorie, high protein snacks. We've heard, we've talked a lot about on the show over these several months that we've been here, the protein infused marshmallow puffs, right? What I want you to do is head to Built.com today. Check out their wide extensive menu of products. Go through all the different flavors. Get yourself a little sample assortment of everything. I've still got an assortment over here of all kinds of different flavors, the berry, the coconut, the cookies and cream. And they're always coming out with a new flavor every month. So take a chance, take a look at, get a sample of some of the new flavors they got. Check out all the different products. And when you get that order put together, I want you to, at checkout, I want you to use the promo code LOCKEDON15. That's L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, the number one, the number five. Use Locked On 15 at checkout. When you do that, you're going to get 15% off your order simply by using the promo code Locked On 15. That's our gimmick to you, right? That's our personal gimmick to you. Use Locked On 15 to get 15% off. Head to Built.com today. Check out their menu and save yourself a few bucks on all the great snacks that they have available to you.